Hey, Norfolk. Welcome aboard. My name is Don. I am an interpreter here at the Jamestown Settlement, and y'all are coming on board our recreation of Susan Constant, which is the flagship of our fleet. So come on board. Um, before we go any further, I do want to warn you. Susan Constant is a ship. What does that mean? That means the overheads are low, the ladders are steep. So as we're touring about, mind your head and watch your feet. We're going to start right in here, up forward. This is the forecastle. Come on in. Great. So this is the forecastle. This is where the crew, the sailors, are going to live. So what we have are three beds. Two right there and one right behind me. And that's for six sailors. Now, when you get out of bed, somebody's going to get into the bed. So it's two people, but not at the same time. John Smith specifically says that people in the same watch should not share the same bed. Uh, and that's why. Um, these berths are just a touch under six feet long. And they're about two feet wide. If you've ever been on board a, a modern U.S. Navy ship, you, you kind of know what we're talking about. Uh, as you can see, it's also used for storage of ship's equipment. Uh, forecastle, living quarters for some of the sailors. Now, we go back out through that door. Very important place. This is the cook's room. It's the kitchen. Uh, not very big. We're talking simple meals, soups and stews and things like that. It's basically built to cook for a crew of 17. It's not built to cook for a total of 71 people. There's 17 sailors on board and we believe 54 passengers. This is where all the food is being cooked at. What we call a steps ever kitchen. All right, now we're gonna go below. Mind your feet, mind your head. We're in an area called the tween deck. Now we call this the tween deck because it's between the main deck up above us and, and the cargo hold down below. Up forward uh, is an area called the four peak. It's more, more berthing for sailors. There's two berths up forward for four people. Uh, and as you can see, storage. Now, historically, we believe. There would have been a bulkhead right here, a wall, separating the four peak from the tween deck. This is the tween deck is actually a cargo deck. It's a light cargo uh, deck. The heavy cargo is going to be down below in the uh, in the cargo hold. And normally for Susan Constant, um, she was owned by Dapper Wheatley and Cole Hirsch, and they were wine merchants. So the normal cargo would have been wine into England and probably wool out and wine back. Uh, on this voyage. But there's enough stuff down there to support a colony of about 104 people for six months or a year. So it's pretty full. This is where the passengers are going to live. Now, unfortunately, nobody wrote about what the voyage was like from a passenger standpoint. We have no idea what the accommodations were like. However, based on other voyages of the time, we can infer that they're probably sleeping on pallets, mattresses, on the deck. Uh, maybe on top of cargo. Uh, they may have been using hammocks. They may have been using hanging cabins. We've got some back aft. We'll talk about those when we get back that way. We'll come back aft a little bit. As you can see, we've got artillery. Uh, these are called Falcons. They fire a shot of about three pounds. It's a light gun. It's not a big gun. Uh, and they're strictly defensive. Uh, this is a merchant ship. It's not a Navy ship. It's not a pirate ship. It's not a privateer. Um, these guys are not out looking for trouble. Um, but that being said, they're not going to run from trouble. These are English sailors. They're not going to run from trouble. These are folks that grew up sailing with Drake and Raleigh and, and, uh, and some of those guys. So they're, they're pretty good at what they do. Not going to look for trouble. Not going to run from it. All right? Then, gun port right here is open. Uh, the hatches are open. That's because we're in port. And uh, when we're out sailing, as when we do sail the ship, when we're out sailing, gun ports are going to be closed. 
Hatches are probably going to close. Canvas covers put over to keep the water out. It does a good job keeping the water out. Also does a pretty good job keeping the light out and the air in. So it's going to be pretty dark down here. Uh, and generally uh, not a comfortable place to spend a 144-day boat ride. But that's what you got. That's what you got. I don't back that cool first. Mentioned a hanging cabin. This is a hanging cabin. Canvas ties down to the deck. Ties down to the deck. That box opens up into a bed. Um, this is another possibility uh, of sleeping accommodation. We don't know if they were using them. It is typical to the period. We don't know for sure if they were on Susan Connor. Now, back here. This compartment, this section of the ship, has is referred to by two names. It's the tiller flat or the steerage. This is the tiller. All right, it's hooked up to the rudder all the way back aft there. This is the whip staff. We're going to talk more about that when we get up on uh, up on on the main deck. This moves, and that's how we steer the ship. And again, like up forward. There was probably a bulkhead here separating the steerage, the tiller flat, from the tween deck. And again, two berths uh, for sailors, quite possibly four people total back here. Okay. Get up on deck. Again, watch your step, watch your head. Really, watch your head. Steering room for the officer's quarters. If you look down below, you saw the bottom of the whip staff. This is the top of the whip staff. This is how we steer the ship. The ship's wheel won't be amended for another 90 years or so. Uh, until then, we're using this whip staff. It's a big lever. Push it to the left. Ship turns to the left. Push it to the right. Ship turns to the right. Now, Anybody that stands back here is going to say, you can't see where you're going. And that's true. You can't see a whole lot out that window. But you don't have to. Also, the deck stands above you on a quarter deck. We'll be up there in just a minute. He has a compass. It gives you a compass course. You have a compass. He tells you, steer east, you steer east. It says, Come right to southeast. That's what you do. Easy enough. All right. Three berths. Uh, for the officers, these guys are probably not sharing the berth, but they're the officers. And uh, yeah, it's okay. All the way aft here. That's the captain's quarters. Captain and the cook. Only two people on board. You're probably sleeping. Why? He's the captain. Frank does have its privileges. And this is one of the privileges. Not a bad game. Quarterdeck. That's where the officer of the deck or the captain is going to stand. He commands the ship from here. And as you can see from here, we have a view of everything. Binnacle here has a compass in it. Talked about that earlier. He's going to set a compass course, give you the compass course. And right here is, is a, a small piece of artillery. Has many names. It's called a swivel gun, Portuguese base, rail gun. John Smith calls it a murderer. It's a small anti-personnel weapon. Think big shotgun. This, is going to, this particular gun will fire about two pounds of musket balls or pistol balls or flint shards. Pretty much anything to cause a human body to leak. It's kind of our version of a close-in weapon system. All right. I'd like to thank you guys for taking this tour. Um, 
Susan Constant, Jamestown Settlement Fleet. We have been going to Arbor Fest for over 30 years. This is the first year that I'm aware of uh, in that period. We've had to miss Harbor Fest well, for reasons. Uh, but while we can't go to Harbor Fest, I hope you guys enjoy the tour of our virtual tour of the ship in our virtual Harbor Fest in Norfolk, Virginia. Thank you very much.